What do you think about the mob at this point of your life? You've been around it. You, yeah. you get a lot of uh, uh, sometimes people. I mean, you've read it. You've seen it. You, you, this is you. It's your life. People claim you were part of it. Like maybe there was some affinity to it, a connection to it. Mm. But what are your thoughts when you think about the mob? Well, the mob is not what it once was. That's for sure. It's kind of like all fractured. You know, it's not what it once was. And it, what, what was it? I mean, could you say at one time it was, there was real honor? Yeah, probably maybe the old time as there was. But what's, what's the benefit of, of shaking down your own neighborhood and people have to pay you money? I don't, I don't know. You know, it comes down to what my dad said. Real respect, real, real people who are real men go out and they get a job and they work for a living, take care of their family. That's a real man. He goes, he said, it doesn't take much strength to pull a trigger, but get up in the morning every day. So I see them. I, do I admire them? No, I have, do I, I still see them and now I have fun with them. When I see them, I laugh, I talk, but I, I, I respect my dad. You know, I respect the guy who gets out and, and make, and works and works hard. So working man's not a sucker? The working man is not a sucker. No, he's not. He's not. Look, everybody in the wise guys that I knew ended up dead or in jail. So if somebody told you, if you walk out that door, every time you walk out that door, you're going to get hit in the head with a bag of garbage. You stop walking out that door. Yeah. But these guys keep walking out that door. Yeah. I, I they know. They're why gonna, do they keep walking out that door? That's part of that fascination because that, that life yeah. kind of doesn't exist anymore. These were kind of like the modern pirates. This is the Wild West. This is yeah. Jesse James. It's romantic looking back at it and saying, wow, these guys took life by the horns. They did whatever they wanted to do and nobody could say mm -hmm. anything. Right. But if you lived with them, if you lived with that type of person, it, yeah. it had to be a hard life to deal with that. Well, the yeah. movies is what romanticized They have it, terrible right? lives. The they have terrible lives. Their kids are always, forget it. If yeah. they, they're not there with their children, their kids end up bad. I mean, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a story about a, a, a big wise guy in my neighborhood. Well, he, I, I, I don't want to mention his name. Um, but his son, his son became a wise guy. He wasn't made his son yet. He ended up getting made. Uh, no, I'm sorry. He never got made. He was so crazy. And I'm sitting there. I'm, I'm standing there with a priest, my best friend, and this guy, this wise guy, on the corner. His son is walking up the block. His son was maybe 20. Okay? His son is going. Now, I can curse, right? I mean, of yeah, course, yeah. And his son's walking up the block. He goes, fuck that. Fuck that. And he's going, I don't, I don't give it. And he's talking to another guy. Fuck that. And, and, I, and, and it's like, there's a priest right there. And he walks, he goes, hey, Dad, what the fuck? And his father goes, what's the matter? What the hell's wrong with you? He goes, the fucking guy just, he pulled this shit with me in the scam. He goes, I swear to God, Dad, I'm going to shoot him. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him. And his father, standing right there, goes, quote, what the hell's the matter with you? You're saying things like that in front of people? So I'm saying to myself, oh, he's going to, you know, reprimand his son, right? You don't ever say things like that. What's wrong with you? He goes, if you're going to whack somebody, you don't say it in front of anybody. <laughs> Which is good advice. <laughs> yeah, <That's> Patrick. <laughs> this is a father yeah. talking. To, and I was like, did he just say that? I was like, the, there was a priest there. And we both looked at each other like, did he just say that? Mm. If you're going to whack somebody, you keep your mouth shut. I'll, talk, I'll, I'll be with you guys in one minute. He walks away with his kid. Now, what shot does this kid got? What happened to him? Wow, that value at 20 years old. At 20 that years sticks. old. What happened to this kid? Yeah. Killed three people. Mm. Life, life in prison. He ended up killing three people. He killed two guys, and then he killed the guy in jail. He's gone. Jeez. What, you, could you expect different? How he grew yeah. up? Yeah. Right. You're expecting the father to be like, you don't do that. What's wrong with you? What's it's, wrong with you? If you're going to do that, you don't tell nobody. You keep it low. <laughs> yeah. What? And I was it's like, crazy. I was yeah. like, wow. Did you, see anybody, did you see anybody that was able to have a normal life or no? Yeah, my friends. No, no, on the mob side. Made man, mob side, you know. No. Okay. No, yeah. ever. No. The wow. number runners, some of the number runners, yeah, I knew them. They passed the father to the son yeah. to the son. To, yeah. They had just normal lives, but they were just number runners. Oh, bookies, yeah. Bookies, Sal yeah. Romano was here yesterday. He said something. He says, you know, you know why everybody eventually uh, flips and they go cooperate? I said, what? He says, if the mob did one thing, nobody would ever cooperate. I'm like, what is that? He says, if they... He says, we're not afraid of going to jail. We're not afraid of going away. We already understand that. That's part of it. Every one of us has done a little bit of time. I'm like, let me see what this guy's going to be saying. He says, if the mob had a program to take care of the wives and kids when you went away, 
nobody would cooperate. That's bullshit. Yeah, that's what he. I'm that just telling you what he bullshit. said. Bullshit. <laughs> okay, so go. That is bullshit. <laughs> Tell me why. Because it's, it's bullshit. Because they're just trying to justify why they can't wait to get. They all sing this. As soon as they get caught, they have run. They raced to the DA. Who's yeah. going to make the deal first? It's bullshit. Listen, my my friend, you saw Rudy Giuliani. One of my closest friends worked for him, and Rudy knows him very well. Uh, and I'll tell you who he is. His name is Phil Folia. He passed away. My closest friend with COVID. When COVID happened, I, it still breaks my heart. Anyway, Phil told me with these wise guys, because he, he worked with Rudy. He put yeah. them all away. He's just one wise guy goes into his office, right? He's sitting down at the chair. Of course, Phil's going to speak to him about, you know, flipping. So he goes, listen, now you want to make a deal with me? And blah, blah, blah. Phil's and all of a sudden, the, Phil told me the story. He goes, the guy just sits back and goes, well, you know, Phil, I don't know what I want to do. I got to think about my future. Those were the words he said. Mm -hmm. My friend Phil gets up, right? There's two detectives in the room with him. He says, come here, come here. Picks the guy up, grabs him by his arm. Come here, come over to the window. Brings him over to the window and says, look, you see that sun over there? You see the sun? Right? He goes, the next time you see that sun is going to be the year 2040. 2040. That's when you're going to see it. Because I'm going to put you the fuck away for 40 to 50 years. Now get the fuck out of my office. They brought him out of the office. Ten minutes later, he came back. He goes, I'm sorry. I, we'll make it. They made a deal. Come on. Stop it. When somebody's telling you you're going to sit in a box for 40 years, 50 years, you talk. It's got nothing to do. He's full of shit. Uh, there, there are, there, so that, oh, that's that's yeah no I, I I mean obviously that's why I wanted to ask you but there are some people that uh, look at Rudy and they say Rudy as an Italian how the hell you put so many people away as an Italian you put away your own people yeah and it went to jail you you did this with yes, the Rico did. law all this stuff yeah. that you go through what do you think about Rudy with what he did in the eighties to the mob I think Rudy was great yeah I mean look I mean I gotta be honest with you when he came to my neighborhood they booed him. They, you know, they didn't like him. Yeah. It was, you know, because, you know, but was is Rudy a good man? Yeah. Yeah. He, he put people away. These guys are bad guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, don't get me wrong. I hung out with them, but I, I didn't become a wise guy. I don't want to be a wise guy. They're bad guys. They'll, they're the first ones to tell you that. You know, the, you know, are there some stand-up guys who don't rat? Yeah. Benny Eggs, the old timers, guys like Benny Sonny Eggs. Francis. Yeah. They didn't rat. You know, that's it. They don't rat. And okay, but that's it. If you want to go that, listen, John Gotti didn't rat. Say what you want about John Gotti. He was a gangster to the end. To the end. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying he, but, but it, at least he stood by his code and said, no, this is it. This is it. A guy told me a great story. I won't tell you who he was. But when, when Gotti was on his, um, on, his, on his deadbed, when he was dying from throat cancer, a priest walked in, and the person whispered to John, you know, there's a, a priest here. Do you want the priest to, and, and, and John went like this. Right to the end, man, no. He already made his decision. He already made his decision. No, no. He didn't want Meaning, to give any final words. No, I priest. don't know if it's, I don't know, how do you interpret that? Because I interpret I, it like, I don't, I don't need a priest. I made my decision. But do you I think he's saying, I don't need a priest, or do you think he's saying, uh, there's no way I'm gonna have a spot in heaven. Like, there's no I way I, I can get in. Like, how think, do you think you process that? I don't think he was even thinking that. Yeah, got I, it. I don't think at that moment. I can't. Like, is it like I can't? I be don't know for him. The life I, ne I never met yeah. him. But I think a wise guy was just saying, like, nah, you know, I don't want to deal like, with it. it. It looks like I'm I'm giving up at the end. Now, you know? not not to give the audience too much here, but there's a gentleman in Mafia States of America that may disagree with with this sentiment. So no, no gonna, question about it. I so, mean, obviously. There's a part of it that, uh, you know, uh, some on the other side who, uh, from Sammy's camp, may say in the recording, John did kind of throw Sammy under the bus saying he was going to have somebody take him out. So there was that. I, I don't know yeah. about that. Again, th those things I don't know about. Yeah. All I know is the guy didn't rat. You know, you know what would be a great sit down? You know what would be a great sit down? Yeah. You know what would be a great sit down? Uh, Junior and Sammy. Would be a great sit down. Yeah, that would be. Whew, I don't know about. We that. would need to have a fence. You would we would need have to a, have. A, yeah, that a, would be. But that uh, would be a great sit down. I think that one. John Gotti. Two you think John Gotti Jr. Oh yeah, because because wow. let both of them hash it out in front of the world, 
and talk to one another. Now, the likelihood of that happening, that's, that's but, probably... But you're not going to get an... Uh, look, you're not going to get yeah. an answer. You're not going to get an, a truthful answer. But what, what, what would happen is, you know what would happen is, is, is uh, I'm a big fan of a good debate. Yeah. You know, a, what does a good debate do? We don't necessarily end up getting an answer, but we get a little closer to the truth, right? right? A good debate. Right. Because yeah. you watch body language, you see one person backing down, you see one person yeah. gets nervous, you see one person really gets annoyed when you poke him in an area that's like, listen, you don't poke me, you can poke me anywhere. This one area, you went right. after this person. We learn a lot. So I don't know. I'm not telling you it's going to happen. The likelihood is slim uh, to none, but I'm well, just saying that would, that, be, would be, that would be something I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if that could happen. I don't think neither Junior nor Sammy would agree to do that sit down. I don't think they would. I yeah. think there's too much water under the yeah, bridge. I think so as well. I, I think they couldn't even talk about certain things. Yeah. Now, if it did happen, how crazy would that be if it did happen? If, if it did happen, we would we would probably need to get the uh, you know, National Guard there. We would probably need to get the military I, there. We probably I, I need just, to call I just, yeah, I, some I, I, security. I just, yeah, I just don't think it could happen. Yeah. Now, the, the setting, too, is very, very important, right? Like, you were talking about, you know, Rudy and who, who talked, who didn't talk. Right. The New York you grew up in is so different from the New York people know today, especially in the Bronx. Yeah. The Bronx was burning back in the day. I mean, you were 60s and 70s in, in the Bronx. There was a, right. a five-alarm fire every day. They were right. trying to burn the tenants out. So, uh, you know, then the, the, the late 70s, late 70s was Son of Sam, right? I mean, yes. like, the New York you grew up in, a lot of times I hear the stories, it feels like it was a little bit of a war zone, man. It was crazy time, but I have to say, I didn't have a. I had a great childhood. I had a wonderful childhood. So people always go, "My God, the childhood!" I go, "No, no, it was great." You know, the wise guys ran the neighborhood. We were all Italian guy kids growing up. Well, everybody was Italian in the neighborhood. It was great. So mm -hmm. I can't say I. I didn't have. To me, it didn't look like, like bad. You know, race riots. The, bron no, the Bronx there was is no burning. There's no race riots in my neighborhood. There was none. It was everybody was Italian there. Mm -hmm. But it was our, our turf, you know, like Bronx yeah. Tale. We owned that, and then uh, the blacks owned from where Webster Avenue was. Uh, the Puerto Ricans owned in a different area. So you, you stayed in our area. Reggie and Jackson, Thurman Munson, I mean, come it's on. Crazy. Well, that, yeah. <laughs> Yesterday, uh, Chaz is at the house, and Tico and Dylan are like, hi, how are you? I said, do you know who he is? No. I say he's a very, very famous actor. Really? What movie were you in? <laughs> They're just like having a conversation. Right. I say, Bronx Tale. I said, you think it's time for them to watch Bronx Tale? Chad says, how old is your son? I said, Tico's nine years old. He says, you know, that's how old I was when I saw a guy get shot right in front of me. Yeah. I said, they're probably ready to watch Bronx Tale. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know. When, when will you let the kids watch no, Bronx Tale? Listen, and we've I, already I, watched movies they shouldn't have watched, so we're probably ready. We and just I haven't had the time right, to watch. And Dylan's what, that. six, seven? Dylan is seven, yeah. Uh, you know what? And yeah. I never noticed that yeah. about that until I had a son. And then when my son became nine... I turned to my wife, I never forgot, and I said, I said, Jana, you know, Dante, and Dante, my son grew up in Bedford, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so I look at him and I go, he was, I was that age. Yeah. And, and it was like weird to me. Great so childhood. When I see a child who's, a child who's nine or 10 years old, I look and I go, how could I be at that age seeing what I see? Crazy, right? It was crazy, yeah, crazy. man. Can I ask a more of a lighthearted question here? Yeah. We were talking about it last women night. Women again? Are you going to go to women? We're going to go to women. We're going to go to women. <laughs> okay. How'd you know? <laughs> so, well, you talked about, you know, the girl, the black girl you Let's dated, stay Webster here. Avenue. Let's, before we go yes. there, because that's like a complete right okay, turn. Gotcha. We're getting on the 95 freeway. Let's stay on a A1A for go now. Go stay there. Kai, can you pull up the video about Giuliani before we take the street for, because uh, Adam's trying to learn about women. I have questions. More. You want to learn about so, women? Go to my podcast, Chaz Palmateri Show. There it is. I talk I about women that. all the time. Non-stop, yes. By the way, Kai, put the link to his podcast in the comment section as well as the description. Folks, go subscribe to Chaz's podcast. Uh, you do this how often? You do a show how often? I do a new show each week. Each week, a each new week. show. Okay. So if you enjoyed this little short segment from the podcast that we did, here's another short segment to watch. Or if you want to see the entire podcast, click over here. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.